In this video, I'm going to show you how to handle events like button clicks and form submissions in a React app. So I've got some JSX here and I can add a button right in the middle here that should do something. But right now, if we view this page, it's just a web page with a button that says do something, but it does nothing. And I'm going to open up the console here just so we can see as we develop what this button is actually going to do. So button has a prop called on click that accepts a function. So I want to pass in a function here to the on click prop. And before I can do that, I need to create a function. So let's make a function called handle click. Uh, and this is just going to console log button clicked. And then we can pass that function to the buttons on click prop. And now when we click this button in the browser, we should see button clicked logged out to the terminal because that's all that function is doing. So this handle click function is just a function that console logs button clicked. And we're passing that to this button through the on click prop. So this is essentially just a callback function, which should be something that you're used to in JavaScript. We're creating a function that we're not going to call. We're going to pass that function as a value to something else. And that thing is now responsible for calling that function. In this case, it's the button. And this is really similar to how we would handle events in a non react app. But because this is react, it's a little bit nicer and we get to do it through JSX. And an important thing you have to remember here is that we are passing in the function as the value. So we don't call the function here because that would be us executing the logic and passing the button, the return value of this function, which is undefined. So we never want to do this. We want to pass it the actual function. So pretty much any event that you would need is available as a prop on these elements. So a button has an on click. And if we had a form here, that would have an on submit prop. I'll just let this auto fill in the details here. Uh, but instead of the handle click function, I'm going to make another function here called handle submit or we'll console log form submitted. I'm going to pass this function to the on submit prop here for the form. So now if we go back into the browser and I submit this form here just by clicking the button, I saw form submitted briefly in the console and then the whole thing refreshed. And that's because we still need to prevent the default behavior, just like we would in a normal web app. So I'm going to accept the event object here and call prevent default on that so that it doesn't completely refresh the page. Now, when we submit, we should see form submitted. And if I click the button, I see button clicked. And notice that these event handlers always start with the word on. We have an on click and an on submit. So these elements are going to accept callback functions through these on event props. And then the functions we pass in usually start with the word handle and they can be called whatever you want. It's just become convention to name these functions handle whatever it is that you're doing. And all of these functions can accept an event object which is a React wrapper around the browser event object, but it acts in pretty much the same way. So I can still call prevent default on it. And for other elements, I can use it to access different pieces of data. So for this input field here, which is just a text input, I can pass in a function for the on change event which will be called every time there is a change to that input field. So every single time I add a new letter in here, this on change event will get called. So I'm going to create another function here called handle text change, which accepts an event object. And it's already auto completed some of this for me. So I'm going to pass this in here. And every time this function gets called, we're going to take the event object, access the target, which is the input field and get the value from it, which should be whatever text I've entered. So now as I start entering in more text here, it's going to console log that out each time. And to make all of this way more useful, we'd want to use state to actually keep track of this data in a more meaningful way. But I'm going to cover that in a different video. And for now, I'm just going to console log everything out. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video and any future videos that I make. So right now I've got these three handle functions that I'm passing into three different elements. So right now I've got these three different functions that I've defined that I'm passing into three different elements through their event props. But I don't necessarily need to define the functions like this. We can define the function in line and it's common to use a fat arrow function when we do that. So on this on change here, I could change it to be uh, a function that accepts the event object 
and then console logs the exact same thing here. So I'm gonna cut that out and paste it in here. And then I can delete this handle text change. And the most important thing here is that we're passing a function to these event handlers. Whether we create it within the component and then pass it in by name, or we create anonymous functions on the fly, it doesn't matter as long as we pass it a function. And please remember not to call the function. You are not responsible for calling the function. You need to pass the element that function so it can then call the function. So let's refactor this a little bit. I'm gonna take this form and cut it out of here. And I'm gonna create a new file for the form. I'm just gonna call this form.jsx and create a new component here called form. And this will now have the form in it. And then in app.jsx, I'm just gonna put that custom form right here. But this won't work right now because this form element is dependent on the handle submit function, which I have in app.jsx. So I could take this function and put it into the form component, but it's common to have a use case where I would want this logic in this function to actually be executed in app.jsx. I have this custom form component, but I need this logic to happen in app because app might manage some state or do some networking or something that I don't want the child component to have to do. So in this case, I wanna keep the handle submit function in app but still have form be the one that calls it. So to do this, I can just hand the function to form using a custom prop. So the naming convention is still to usually start with the word on lowercase and then specify what kind of event it is. So I'm gonna call this still on submit because it is a form submit and I'm gonna pass in my custom handle submit function. Then on the form side of things, I need to accept that on submit function, there it is. Then here, I'm gonna have the forms on submit just call the on submit from the parent component. So we're passing a function down to the custom component, then passing that function onto the form. But this should still run in the exact same way. So if I go back to the browser and I have not imported form here, so I need to import form from form. Now, this should still act in the same way. So if I hit submit, I get form submitted, which is the logic that is being executed in app.jsx and being passed down to form, which is passed then onto the actual form component. But since this is a custom component, I probably wouldn't expect it to give me a browser event object. So what I might actually do is put this logic into the custom component so that up here, I can just have a little bit of cleaner logic that only handles the stuff after the prevent default has been handled. So back in form, I could define another function called handle submit that accepts that event object, does the event prevent default, and then calls on submit within this function. And this demonstrates one of the reasons why you would always put these functions within the component function. It's so it can access the variables within the component itself. So in this case, I need to be able to access the on submit prop, but you might need to access other state and other things within the component itself. And this is a very simple example of using events, but these are things that you will do as your application grows. And to really make this more realistic, we wanna start using these event handlers with state so that we can start keeping track of changes within our application. So my next video, I'm gonna go over how to use state within React. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video and any future videos that I make.